Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this session. We have been looking at uh, PLL building blocks and in the last session we looked at PFTs, PLL building blocks and phase frequency detector is the one which we looked at. Uh, we looked at two different phase frequency detectors, one was the D flip flop based and other was the NAND based. Okay. There are other uh, PFTs uh, also or the other implementation of the PFTs and let me just if I want to summarize, uh, you have seen D flip flop based, right? You know that what kind of problems you have, D flip flop based PFT, you have seen NAND based PFT and there were two different uh, architectures for that one um, some one with the all NAND gates and other with a slight modification on that NAND gate. The other one which we will not go in this uh, you can always refer to the literature for that uh, pass transistor based PFT okay and Another one is glitch latch based PFT. Okay. Uh, the reason that we have other two PFTs, uh, pass transistor and glitch latch based PFT, is specifically to reduce the reset time and to minimize the window during which the average output of the PFT is negative even when the phaser is positive. Okay. But, uh, you have other designs also, uh, the, this list is not uh, ending here, there are many designs. Uh, the only uh, reason why I will stop with the NAND based PFD is because uh, D flip flop and NAND based PSD PFDs are most commonly used unless that negative uh, region becomes too critical. Okay. So, in the NAND based PFD you have seen uh, two input NAND gates. So, you have seen two input NAND gates, then three inputs and okay. So, two inputs NAND gate, three inputs and even four input NAND gates. Now, when you have different kind, when you have different input to the NAND gates, uh, okay, you want that the output of the NAND gate when you implement, it should be in the same, it should come as a, the output should make a transition in the same way whether input A changes or input B changes. For example, if you have a NAND gate like this, right, A and B and the output is Y. Let us say A is 1 and B is also 1 or logic high and A makes a transition like this, okay, and then after some time it becomes, it uh, is back to high. If A makes a transition like this and B remains high, your Y output A and B, uh, your Y will be equal to 1 because what you have is, uh, so our operation is if you look at it A, B and Y, when A is 0 and B is 0, this is 1, right, when A is 0 b is 1, then also it is 1, and this is 1, this is 0, then also this is 1, and when a and b both are 1, the output is 0. So, the output was 0, and after some time, when you make a transition at a, what happens is that uh, a and b both a becomes 0, b is equal to 1. So, after some time, your y will become 1. Okay, and then let us say when A is back again, you will have uh, Y as 0 again. Okay, so this will happen. Now, let us say that in place of A, your B changes, so A remains the same, B changes, B becomes slow, in that case, your Y will again become high. This is going to happen. Now, in this case, what if you look at it, the delay between the transition time between A and B, A and Y and the transition between 
your B and Y, these two transition delays should be same ideally. Okay, T D 1 should be equal to T D 2. Final logic is surely going to be uh, same, but the parallel operation would also require that this should also be same. And the reason is because uh, this is NAND based PFT, your A and B signals uh, will be like your uh, reference clock and your feedback clock. And if you have a phase error, you do not want the output to be changing with respect to the sign of the uh, or the uh, phase error output of the PFT should change with respect to the sign of the phase error. It should change by the same amount whether it is positive or it is negative. But what happens when you implement this NAND gate using transistors? So, when we implement uh, using transistors, the logic which you see is like this and then you have something like this. Okay. So, this is your typical NAND gate, you have A and B and this can be A and B. Now, here the parasitic capacitance at each node actually differs. So, consider the case when A and B both were equal to 1, right? at that time this was discharged or if you think the other way when A is 0 and B is 1 either A is 0 and B is 1, right. When A goes to 1 at that time, because B was already 1, so this would have been discharged to 0, right. And then when A goes 0 to 1 at that time, you are going to discharge only this node, the capsule which you are having here, C1 and C2 here, right. In place, if you have A as 1 initially and B as 0 and if A was 1, the output node, this Y node is actually, uh, if you look at it, B was 0. So, this node because B is 0 and this is 1. So, output node was initially 1 and your this particular node because A is 1 this is charge 2, you can say VDD minus VT. And when you, when A, B goes from 0 to 1, you discharge this particular node from VDD minus VT to 0. So, kind of charging and discharging which is happening in the NAND gate, right? It depends on whether A is triggering the change in the output or B is triggering the change in the output. This will make the uh, input transition to output transition delay dependent on the signals A and B, which is not desirable. So, what we would like to do is we want to make it symmetric with respect to the inputs. So, you can make it symmetric by using the symmetry gate, where, where for each transition same thing happens. Okay. So, I can do this. In place of using two branches, I will use, in place of using one branch, I will use two branches. Okay. So, they both are connected like this. Okay. So, then if the transition is triggered at y from high to low, then whether A triggers the transition or B triggers the transition, it is going to be same form for A and B to output. Okay? So, you can say this is like a symmetric NAND gate. It is possible to do uh, in case when you have two input NAND gate. For three input NAND gate, it becomes little difficult because at some point of time, uh, you cannot uh, have all the co possible combination with 2 it is easy. So, here I have A, B, C and Y. So, you will have uh, a typical NAND gate which you are using like this which is A, 
B and C. Okay. F A B and C and then in place of using only one branch we can use see there are three positions so uh, total number of combinations are large but uh, using only single branch is uh, uh, will have more errors or more variation in the transition delay. So, in place of using that I will try to use another one where I can have A, B, C. So, I will normally use B, C, A and then so each transistor, transistor occurs at the look at the same position in the branch once C, A, B. Okay. So, you can do this and this is your y output. Similarly, you can do for 4 input NAND gates. It is true that uh, if we have these 3 locations and we would like to have all possible combinations, then you may use another 3 such branches right? to have all possible combination, but that is going to increase the parasitics and this becomes more cumbersome when you start designing for 4 inputs. So, somewhere you have to uh, make peace with the transitions okay, uh, and then uh, you can use it. But ideally if you want if you ask me the question then ideally if I do not want any variation with respect to the change at the input to the change in the output if I do not want any change in the delays the transition delays then I should use all possible combinations like this. Okay. So, this uh, completes our uh, discussion on the NAND based PFTs. Thank you.